Hello fellow crafters, artisans, and misfits. This is the queen of the misfits, Miss Darling, in the studio. And today, we're going to have some fun. We're going to use up some of that junk mail, you know, the return of address envelopes that you get and you don't need them anymore because you're making all your payments online and stuff so I get tons of, of those envelopes and I keep them because I know I can make use of them someday and so I've gotten rid of uh, six I've got rid of six and I'm gonna have two more I'll get rid of uh, in a minute so let me let me uh, show you what we're going to be doing today this one i made some while ago and took me a while of studying it to <laughs> figure out what, what i did but um i have this closure that i put on with some elastic cording and uh, a colorful what do you call it a tack anyway i covered the outside there's two return address envelopes inside this and I'll, I'll show you as I make one for you how you go about doing that but anyway once you get the envelopes ready to be covered I used vintage book paper to cover the outside and then I had printed off some this design here on some vellum paper and I apparently glued that down over the whole surface so I have this kind of uh, shiny smooth vellum covering the whole thing and then there's some coffee dyed fabric that's here this was a window envelope and I had left the window open I decided I didn't like it and so I've covered it over now so that was what I did on the outside and then on the inside I put this Florentine paper now I kinda did it out of sequence I put my tack through after I had put the whole thing together and so I had this ugly looking um, end of the tack there and I had to cover it over with some coffee dyed fabric uh, that I have uh, so you don't want to do it out of sequence you whatever you know if you're going to attach some kind of a fastener I'll show you in a minute a different uh, approach you want to do it before you cover the inside and that way whatever's on this side will be hidden anyway when I was done with that I had zigzagged around the whole thing to um, seal it all together and didn't do that great a job <laughs> hey but this is junk journal and we are not looking for perfection here if you're looking for perfection you're at the wrong channel we're just having fun and so anyway then on the inside uh, I made a a cover out of some um, scrapbook paper and then on the inside I have these journaling pages that are just coffee dyed uh, pages and then I have a couple of bookmarks that I made that I've paper clipped inside there and just really left it blank so there's plenty of writing space and a nice little interior cover uh, for protection and then this is what the back looks like so that's how this one you could you could put the elastic on that way to keep it closed or you could go around this way twice and enclose it that way so you know it, it's loose enough to be able to, to do that I don't put my elastic on real tight because over time they're going to just stretch out on you and so if you don't do them that tight to begin with hopefully they won't stretch out at all on you so that was that one and now this one I used a two larger junk mail envelopes as my substrate and I put on a different kind of closure as you can see here this is a a um, 
It's called a hitch fastener and it's available from Tim Holtz. And you can see that I did this one in the proper sequence because I, I put the fastener on before I covered the interior. And that way you don't see the other side of the fastener. Anyway, so this one is a, a little bit larger, but it would still fit into a large handbag easily. And um, it's got fabric on there and, and a bunch of ephemera of various types, uh, you know, postcards and invoices and whatever. And you could see that it was a, a window envelope. I did leave the window open here and put this little gal behind there. I had a window envelope on the back as well, but I covered that all over. And so you can do as you please. Anyway, so now this particular fastener is, is uh, I, I didn't know really what, what to do to, um, to make this work. So I just made a really large hoop here and you come around with two of those and it's simply tied in the back real grunge like <laughs> uh, you know me so anyway that's that's another idea for you and I really like that it came out well and this is you know elastic cording again and um, everything else is pretty much the same um, I covered the interior of this one with fabric instead of paper and I put another piece of of um, scrapbook paper here, cut it to size and I have on the interior uh, coffee dyed paper and no further embellishment though one could always add whatever one wants and I just felt like there's enough going on, enough pizzazz and, and uh, pattern and whatever I didn't feel the need to do anything more. Plus, I was just feeling a little lazy too. <laughs> so, anyway, that shows you that. Now, having done two grungy types, I was ready for a little more feminine frilly type. And so, I made this one yesterday. And we're going to make one similar to this uh, in this video. So if you want to just hang on and, and watch, I'll show you how, how I made it. And in this case, I wound up with a ribbon closure. And um, I will do that as well uh, with the other one. And again, you want to do it in the proper sequence. Always put whatever your closure is, put it on before you cover the inside. And so this one has some beautiful soft um, botanical paper on the front cover and the back cover. There's also some lace. Uh, I'll show you why I did that later. And um, then you open it up. This one does not have an interior cover. It just went straight to the coffee dyed pages inside. But it is lined on the inside with, there's, there's some botanical print back there, but you can barely see it. And then I used a piece of off-white linen uh, that has uh, floor, you know, flowers on it to cover the inside. And I always like leaving my, my uh, fabrics frayed so I tear, I don't try not to cut, I always try to tear, and then covered the spine with some lace. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and uh, I hope you're excited, and let's go. Now, I have done a little preparing on this, and this is the fabric that I'm going to use for the cover and the interior of this one. And that one's going to go on the interior. Here are my two 
return address envelopes and then this is going to be the cover now this is the same fabric underneath and then I just added a piece of very shiny white lace on top it is what I want to say it's it's see-through enough so that you can still get an idea of what the design is behind it but yet it just gives you this very uh, romantic just a, a, a special feeling I think having the lace on top so we're going to cover the outside with this and then the interior will be that and then I'm going to use ribbon as our closure and tie off and so here's the envelopes and we have to first glue them together and so I'll do that now and um, it's important that you have two that are the same size for obvious reasons and so I'm not these are window envelopes I'm not going to pay any attention to the windows they will be covered over so it really doesn't matter where they fall and so all we're going to do is we're going to tuck one flap inside the other envelope like so and glue it in there and then we'll glue this flap to the outside of, of that envelope okay so uh, let me get my glue working and I'll be right back Okay, we are working again, so I'm going to put some glue down on the outer side of this flap. And then slide it in, line it up, and press it down. And then on the flap that's left and put glue all over this and just press that down so now we have the inside makings of our little journal and so I have gone ahead and basted uh, real lightly with some white thread. I have basted the lace to the other fabric and I forgot to tell you I've laid down a thin piece of cheesecloth there and basted the three together so that'll give it a little bit of um, you know padding there and so this is going to be glued right on top of that and my edges of course are you know it's larger it, you can cut this larger and then if you want to you can glue the overhang over so that you have a smooth finished edge there I'm not going to do that because my lace has this scallop design at the bottom and and I want that to show so I'm going to be consistent and leave all the sides just as they are okay So I'm just going to take and put my glue all over one half, well, one, one of the envelopes, we'll, we'll put it that way. I'm going to glue down one envelope at a time. And you can sew around the perimeter 
at some point if you want to do that. I probably won't because I've got, I'm a little lazy about changing my threads in my sewing machine and I've got black thread in there right now and I don't think the black would look so good on this pastel. example but well I guess I will have to do that after all because I've got to have a really solid way of keeping all of my layers together because I'm only going to be gluing actually the uh, the, the cheesecloth to the envelope itself and that's not going to be very sturdy in the long run. If you hear that little birdie that's swoop sending me text messages. She and Dirt got back from New York a couple of days ago and they picked up the kittens that I was babysitting and and took them back to their place okay so now before I do anything else to the inside I'm going to have just a Excuse me. I'm going to have just a single strand of ribbon that um, I'll have on each side and that will serve as my closure for this. You don't need anything really strong because it's a small journal. And um, so anyway, I, I'm going to put some glue down about halfway and then uh, glue about oh half an inch or so of the ribbon and then I'll do the same on the other side okay now I'm ready to attach the inside cover and so just like with the other side I'm going to glue half of it down at a time. So I think what I'm going to do is put some white thread in my sewing machine and not only sew around the perimeter but of course I'll be sewing down the middle when I attach the journal pages. When you're gluing you know you want to make sure you press out all of you know any wrinkles that you might have in the fabric and put a little glue under there to keep the envelope shut any glue over the ribbon so not only will the glue hold everything in place but then when you come back and sew on top of it you'll have something that's really secure and will hold up for a long time no matter how much usage it gets don't forget to put some glue in here in this back part of the envelope so we have our inside and our outside and so the next step is to sew all around the perimeter and 
we'll be making the pages for the interior and then you know attaching it all together and and that's just about uh, everything that will need to be done unless one wants to add some ephemera to it so I can't show you me sewing this I will go to my machine and take care of that and then I'll be back so see you in a minute okay well um, I pulled the black thread out of my sewing machine and put in some white thread and I got partly it partly sewed and I don't know what happened maybe I threaded it incorrectly or I have bad thread but I couldn't finish it on the sewing machine so I just had to to uh, baste it you know with a slip stitch going all the way around and then I stitched all the way down the middle as well to hold it all together and uh, so I guess I'll be putting my black thread back on to finish this off and um, I know that it's good for it's a good thread and um, so we'll we'll see anyway so then for the inside I took a sheet of eight by eight cardstock from uh, Tim Holtz that I have in my stash. I picked this one out because of the colors. I thought it just went very nicely with the fabric there. So that's going to be the cover. This is the inside. And then I, uh, using this as a pattern, I took some coffee dyed paper that I had and you know just laid it down as a template and uh, cut around it until I had four sheets and so that's going to go on the inside and this will be the internal journal and now I'm going to sew it with the sewing machine right down the middle now if you don't have a sewing machine you can sew this by hand, make three holes, one sort of in the middle and then about half an inch in from the top and the bottom, and then use embroidery thread to um, attach the whole journal to the cover. So that's another way to do it if you don't have a sewing machine. But if you do have a sewing machine, I like to draw a line down the middle of the center so that I have something easy to follow as I'm stitching and uh, I have found that to be the best way to get it exactly where I want it to go. So what I like to do is I have these clamps and I first want to make sure that everything is lined up properly in the journal itself and then clamp that together so that doesn't move and then come back and position it right in the middle of the cover and clamp it down again this time clamping it to the cover so I'll go and and sew that together and then I'll be back and we'll finish finish this up Okay, I'm back and I have it sewed down the middle and I'm going to remove my clamps now.
and it's essentially done. Now, um, I may go through and, and clip out that basting thread there because I don't need it now that I have sewed down the middle with the sewing machine but um, now of course you're totally free to embellish it some more I'm not going to do anything more to, to this I, I have a nice focal point up there as it is just with the color and I like how simple it is and straightforward and um, this is the back end. Now um, if you find, I don't, I don't see mine even though I had black thread in there I left the white bobbin in to see if thread was my problem and I suppose maybe it was because I didn't have any problem at all sewing this with uh, the sewing machine once I went back to the black thread. But if you have thread that's showing down here, assuming you use a sewing machine or even if you do it by hand, and you don't want that to show, I would just take a little bit of, of lace border that um, would look nice. This is not the right color. I would go for something white on mine. But you could take a thin, maybe some crocheted lace or whatever you happen to have. Um, for instance, something like this that's got a nice finished edge on both sides. And just so a strip of that down there and that will will hide the thread quite easily and nicely and and also you know just kind of fortify it even more and uh, give you you know a, a look like that now mine doesn't need to be covered because you can't see it but I might do this anyway because I like the look of that so there you have it and you wind up with this nice little um, journal that one could carry in one's handbag and then you simply tie it off into a nice bow to keep it closed and and it's a wonderful little journal for yourself to give as a gift uh, or to even make a bunch of them and, and sell them. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope if you learned something, been inspired to make something like this of your own. And I thank you for being here. And so, that's it for this video. If you haven't uh, been to my Etsy shop, hope you'll take a peek there. And look for links in the description box to some of the products or tools that I have in videos and I will see you again hopefully. So that said, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.